It's Tuesday, February 7th, 2012. I'm Curtis Hollister, and you're watching 52-Week Low, the show that profiles public issuers at or around their 52-week low. Today, we're talking about Forest Oil Cor Corporation, and my guest today is Robert Weinstein, uh, the person that's running the show Paid to Trade. Robert, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's great to be here. So, Robert, we've, we've talked many times before. I mean, there's lots of different ways to look at these companies, um, you know, uh, Forest Oil Corporation trading under the symbol FST on the New York Stock Exchange. Um, these guys are kind of the victim of the natural gas industry and kind of the, the, the at, at the fate of the market effectively for the price of natural gas. What, what's going on with the company today? Right. Uh, the company recently made a 52-week low and like many oil and natural gas companies uh, with natural gas at historic lows, um, the revenue has been suffering and along with it, the stock price. Uh, right now they have about uh, $1.5 billion in market cap and they uh, trade about 3.5 million shares a day. Yeah, so they're trading pretty good volume, obviously. And, you know, when I'm looking at the numbers here, the big challenge is the, their, their price relative to book value. I mean, it seems like it's almost at parity. Right. right. Some of the assets, uh, depending on how you price in the proven, re proven reserves, um, you're looking at some of the assets basically being given away for free with, uh, when you purchase this stock. Uh, the revenue is about $850 million a year. Yeah, and last year they pulled in basically around 25% uh, in net income um, or net profit, as, if I recall. That's not too bad. Right. Yeah. The, the uh, margins are approximately 40%. Um, so they're executing fairly well. Uh, and if natural gas prices, which I don't necessarily expect to rise anytime soon, but if they do uh, rise, uh, forest oil would certainly benefit from that. And or if oil prices uh, rise, which have been relatively stable near hundred dollars a share. Now these guys are producing both oil and natural gas. Obviously, they are. Every everything that happens in international markets even affects these guys that are only playing within the North American uh, market. These guys that are in Canada um, and and the U.S. and I think some assets internationally, but primarily within North America. Right. They're based out of Colorado. Uh, they have oil fields, uh, gas fields, in in the Texas Panhandle, and also up in uh, Alberta, Canada. Gotcha, gotcha. Obviously, the price of oil. I mean, there's there's a number of factors that are happening internationally. We're seeing that you know these uh, kind of um, uh, sanctions against uh, Iran and so forth, causing basically right. a gap in the price of oil. You know, is is that affecting these guys? Is that going to you know possibly impact them? What do you see as the the market impact of that for a small player? Uh, like I, I, yes, I, I definitely uh, believe it's going to have an impact and is having an impact. Uh, the differential between uh, Brent uh, North Sea Oil and West Texas Intermit is a, about $20, which is very, very wide uh, historically. And th that basically stems from uh, Iran uh, threatening to shut down uh, oil supplies due to uh, European sanctions. Um, whether that comes to, uh, to bear or not, nobody can really say for sure. But... Uh, that certainly keeps uh, oil prices um, at a premium, and especially currently uh, uh, Brent uh, oil futures. Yeah, well, I don't see the tourism industry in Iran picking up the slack for the oil industry, that's for sure. So, I mean, obviously these guys right. might be barrel ra rattling, but they're not going to be able to hold that up for very long, that's for sure. Right, they, they definitely need the income, and if... Um, uh, even if they did shut down the oil, one could only expect it would last for a very short period of time. And um, so we really can't count on that to be a, a major catalyst, uh, a bullish catalyst for forest oil. But uh, what one uh, can expect to happen is that things should at least um, not deteriorate any further. And they are profitable mm -hmm. even with natural gas prices as low as they are. I think that's what's extraordinary, obviously, is, I mean, these guys um, have a good business by most business accounts. And if natural gas takes off, I mean, they're going to be, you know, a fire hose of money effectively. Right, exactly. Um, I, I don't see that happening anytime soon, uh, absent a major 
uh, catalyst. But um, if you look at the chart, uh, you can see uh, the price the price fell uh, and hit a low uh, in late September. And one thing that should be noted about that is that that was largely due to uh, the distribution in a form of a dividend of uh, the assets of Lone Pine, mm. which is a company. And um, Forest Oil then received uh, approximately 0.6 uh, shares. And uh, Forest distributed a approximately 80% of the ownership. So even though that uh, chart looks like it really gapped down hard, a uh, large part of that was a dividend. And most importantly, uh, what should be noted as is since then, since the dividend was paid, uh, the stock has based and has uh, held support. And looks it looks poised to at least maintain where it's at and hopefully uh, move up from here. Now you like this stock, not because of where the natural gas industry is going, as you've indicated, but more the numbers that are supporting it and kind of the, the, the derivatives that are underpinning it and so forth. So the supercomputer, uh, uh, the big supercomputer, what did it tell you? And, and what's your opinion on what the trade is? Yes, my, uh, my supercomputer, uh, my, my computer's uh, You've got two, your, your supercomputer brain and, and obviously the, yeah. uh, the multiprocessor system that's uh, running these trades at the same time. Yes. Um, what it says is that if they, if they can make uh, money currently, uh, and actually relatively speaking for the price of the stock at around, I think it's uh, somewhere around 13 and a half a share, yeah. uh, the, the P-E ratio is only around 12 uh, looking forward. So uh, there's no there's no premium being paid for this, and that's because the perception is uh, natural gas prices um, have nowhere to uh, have no way to go up anytime soon. Uh, that being said, that's fully priced in. So uh, if natural gas prices do go up, uh, forest oil would would certainly benefit. But what uh, what my computer says is that things things are likely to get better or at least stay the same. And that sets up an interesting trade with a, uh, with a call right. And that's where you buy the stock and then you also sell a call option for the premium. Gotcha. And that, that basically pays you uh, to own the stock. Um, Forest Oil doesn't pay a dividend, but this is a, a method of being able to capture some income while you own it. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I mean, it seems like these, the management team obviously seems like they're good enough to make this a profitable business operations wise. But in times like this, it's the trade that makes these companies valuable. So that's that's an interesting insight. Is there anything else that you want to kind of share about this company with regards to like the whole industry with like the United States Natural Gas Fund or, or you know, how does that align with these guys from the point of view of looking at them relative to the industry and, and the, the UNG as, a, as an option? Sure, yeah, uh, the UNG uh, ETF uh, tracks natural gas prices. Uh, and that, that makes a very easy way for the average retail um, investor to be able to track what natural gas prices are doing. Mm -hmm. um, and so unlike- and that graph uh, is going down, right? Uh, quite obviously, that graph is going down. It is, it, it, has, it has gone brutally down. Um, and uh, for someone who lives in Wisconsin, that's a, it's a great thing during, uh, the, during the winter during heating the season. winters. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, but uh, everybody knows that. Everybody knows that the price of natural gas is low and nobody expects it to go up. So that has been fully priced in. Uh, the stock is down from probably around 40, 45 uh, for the 52 week highs. And so, yes, uh, it, it doesn't feel necessarily uh, very comfortable buying a stock uh, when it's gone down this far, but that's like buying it on sale. And especially if you add in um, a, a call right where you sell, for example, uh, I especially like the, the March $15 uh, strike price calls. If you add that in um, and the stock doesn't move up, it just uh, moves along sideways, uh, you can still make money. Exactly. Exactly. Well, awesome insight as always. And thanks for the technical analysis. And analysis and suggestions on the trade, Robert. Um, Thank you. And always, it's great to have you. Thank you. If you'd like more information on any of the stocks, trades that Robert's suggesting, you can visit his website at paidtotrade.com. If you'd like more uh, videos from public issuers or industry experts, 
please visit investorchannel.tv. I'm Curtis Hollister, and you're watching 52 Week Low.